I've already been able to examine how well two RX 480s perform in Crossfire and their value against Nvidia's Pascal GPUs in that regard. However, while dual 480s may have a near identical cost per frame rate as the 1070, a single RX 480 does more to indicate that it's a worthy purchase based on value. But let's dive into the review of the PowerColor RX 480 reference card to find out the full story. The RX 480 is based on AMD's 4th generation graphics core Next, or GCN architecture, which is produced on a 14 nanometer FinFET process, similar to Nvidia's 16 nanometer FinFET that is found on their Pascal cards. One of the things that AMD promoted quite a bit before launching the RX 480 was this generation of cards performance per watt being much higher than previous generations. And while that may be true while comparing AMD to AMD, the RX 480 compared to Nvidia's GTX 1070 or 1080 comes nowhere near the same level of performance per watt. My Crossfire setup barely matched or exceeded the 1070 in performance in many cases, and yet drew over 100 to 125 watts more. And here's where I'd like to address the issue that has been going around with regards to the RX 480's over spec, that is over 75 watts power draw on the PCIe slot or even PCIe power connector. Unfortunately, I don't have the testing equipment that would be necessary to see how much the PCIe slot or connector are delivering individually, so I can't directly comment on that aspect, but in all of my testing, the RX 480 hovered around the 135 to 140 watts of power draw with occasional spikes to 150. It seems that AMD has pushed the card to its limits with regards to total power draw, but appears the overdraw of power is on a card by card basis. However, with even dual RX 480s installed on my system, overclocked to 1330 MHz each, and clearly drawing more power than what they're rated for, both my power supply and my motherboard never skipped a beat. It's not a definitive conclusion as to the safety of the card, and there's no guarantee that I wouldn't be doing long-term damage to my other components, but I didn't personally experience any noticeable issues. However, I am glad to see that AMD is working on a solution via the driver fix, due to be released on July 5th, so hopefully this won't be an actual discussion point regarding the 480 moving forward. Moving into the tech specs, the RX 480 has 36 compute units with 2,304 string processors with core clock speeds of 1,120 MHz base and 1,266 MHz boost, giving up to 5.8 teraflops in peak performance. It features a 256-bit memory interface on 8GB of GDDR5 VRAM for a total memory bandwidth of 224GB per second. The outputs are a single HDMI 2.0 port and triple display port outputs with a lack of DVI, which seems like an odd exclusion on a card aimed to a lower end market. The aesthetics of the reference cooler are rather ordinary with a standard rectangular box design and a single blower style fan. The construction of the card is mainly plastic, but not as if AMD skimped on the card's functional integrity in order to save on costs. The noise and heat on the card are fairly high, with the blower easily hitting 55 to 56 decibels under normal gaming load, with temperatures of over 80 degrees Celsius. Not a particularly effective solution, but it keeps the card steady at the 1266 MHz boost clock. The performance benchmarks for the RX 480 are a particularly good showing, especially for the price point. The raw data shows that the RX 480 comes in effectively at a tie with the GTX 970 in all major titles, with really high average frame rates at 1080p, decent enough 1440p gaming, especially if you're willing to drop detail settings a smidge, and then not really useful 4K gaming performance unless you're willing to take a major quality hit in order to keep the minimum FPS above 30. Given that the cheapest GTX 970 comes in at roughly $260 US and 5,400 Rand here in South Africa, the RX 480's performance brings a new king to value gaming at 1080 and 1440p. Its cost per frame rate is significantly lower than that of the GTX 1070 and 1080s as well. It seems as if AMD's decision to not compete with Pascal directly has been a wise one. The value aspect of the RX 480 is simply better than anything that Nvidia has to offer at the moment, especially at the $240 price point for the 8GB model. Presuming that the 4GB model has the same raw performance data at 1080 and 1440p, its lower costs will make it that much more compelling to pick up for a budget or strictly 1080p gaming build. In South Africa, that decision is a bit harder to come by, as the cheapest 480 comes in at 4,800 Rand, while most of them are hovering around the 5,400 Rand mark. 
Given that you can pick up a 970 for the same price, it needs a bit more deliberation. The extra 4GB of VRAM are compelling in name only as likely 1080p gaming won't be utilizing anything above the first four. However, things such as DX12 and Vulkan optimization make the RX 480 a more reasonable long-term choice, even at the same price point as a 970. And then there's also the fact that increased performance typically can come due to driver optimization, and the RX 480 is still only on its first driver release at this point. You'll likely see the 480 pull ahead of the 970 as time progresses. And as much as the term future-proof isn't an honest word, as nothing ever truly is future-proof, the RX 480 will likely go on performing stronger for a longer duration than the 970. The extra PCIe power draw may concern some, but it appears that AMD is taking the necessary steps to prevent any actual long-term issues from arising. I personally wouldn't at all be concerned with keeping this card for myself in my system. But I also understand the rather safe than sorry mentality that others have regarding their equipment. So overall, I'd wholeheartedly recommend the RX 480 for anyone who's going to be playing on a 1080p 60Hz monitor or even 75Hz or wants an entry level VR performance as the 480 can match any of those scenarios at a really great price point. And with that conclusion, I'd like to thank Wootware for sending over this PowerColor RX 480 as well as the other one for a review. Wootware should be your go-to choice for computer components if you live here in South Africa. They currently have the lowest price on the RX 480 by several hundred rand, and they stock everything else that you could possibly want for your system. Their tremendous pricing, great selection, and top-notch customer service team makes choosing Wootware an absolute no-brainer for whatever your PC needs next. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wootware.co.za to wood up your life. And that wraps it up for this video on my review for the PowerColor RX 480 GPU. Like it if you found it helpful at all, dislike it if you disagree with me or my conclusions. You can subscribe to stay up to date on all of my tech related content. Hopefully that will include some RX 480 partner cards in the near future. And I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.